Bibliophiles of the internet, my name's Adriana, and today I'm here to recommend some diverse own voices middle grade books. Shout out to Brody from A2Brody for tweeting out this call for recommendations and allowing me to use it as inspiration to bring y'all some hashtag quality content. First of all, even though it should be obvious, I should mention this list is not intended to be definitive nor exhaustive. These are just titles that immediately came to my mind. Some of them I've read, some of them I have not yet read, but they all deserve to be on this list. Second thing I should say is that I won't be mentioning any Rick Riordan Presents books because I feel like that's the obvious choice and I think those have the biggest market by far and most people already know about those books. It would be like making a fantasy recommendations video and only mentioning a certain boy wizard. It's just the obvious choice. You really can't go wrong with any of the Rick Riordan Presents books. You have stuff like Tristan Strong, Sal and Gabby Break the Universe, or Dragon Pearl, plus you got stuff like Paula Santiago coming out in 2020. The imprint does not need my help. It is objectively kicking butt. With all that said, the first book I want to recommend is The Forgotten Girl by India Hill Brown. This is a recent release from one of our own, a booktuber formerly known as Books and Big Hair. It's an own voices creepy middle grade story about Iris who's playing in the woods and making snow angels when she literally uncovers an old gravestone beneath her feet. Immediately afterwards strange things start happening and there's something calling her back to that abandoned grave and with some research she finds out that this grave is from a forgotten black cemetery dating back to the segregation era when white graveyards and black graveyards were kept separate. And from what I understand Iris is determined to restore this girl's grave and finally pay her the proper respect all while dealing with a jealous vengeful ghost. Next I want to recommend Marcus Vega Doesn't Speak Spanish by Pablo Cartaya. This is an own voices Latinx middle grade story about Marcus Vega who's really big for his age and that's why he's falsely accused of starting a fight which subsequently gets him suspended just before spring break. Marcus's mom takes it as a sign that the family needs to reset and regroup so they use that time off to fly to their homeland of Puerto Rico, a place Marcus has never known and doesn't understand and is also where his estranged father lives. So Marcus tries to find out more about his dad and reconnect with him and along the way he learns a lot about his family, his culture, and how he can bridge together all these things that make him Marcus. Next up I want to talk about Zenobia July by Lisa Bunker. This is an own voices queer middle grade story about a young trans girl named Zenobia who's really into computers and gaming and programming and she's recently moved away from her father to live with her two aunts in Maine and have a fresh start. When someone posts Islamophobic memes on her new school's website, Zenobia quickly realizes that she is just the right person to look into it and find out who's really behind these hateful posts. Even though this is a powerful, affirming story for young folks, there are definite trigger warnings for bullying, cyberbullying, harassment, forced outing of a side character, homophobia, Islamophobia, gender dysphoria, and allusions to abuse. So definitely be conscious of that content. Then I have to continue to spread the good word about Front Desk by Kelly Yang. This is an own voices middle grade story about first generation Chinese immigrant Mia who helps her parents run the motel they both manage and live in by tending to the guests and helping to run the front desk. But they also have to make sure their tyrannical landlord doesn't find out that Mia's parents sometimes allow other immigrants to take shelter in the empty rooms at night. As if that wasn't enough, Mia and her parents don't have much money and they're starting to suspect that their landlord may be taking advantage of them because of their their precarious social status. It's really a story about earnestness, determination, love, and leading with kindness, and I think I can definitely say it's the book on this list I recommend the most. Next I gotta talk about Dear Sweet Pea by Julie Murphy, which is her latest release. This is her first middle grade story, its own voices for the fat rep, and it's about a girl named Sweet Pea whose parents are currently going through a divorce. For some reason they decide to live in nearly identical houses on the same street, and the one house separating them belongs to this eccentric, advice columnist. When the neighboring journalist goes out of town, she tells Sweet Pea to please look out for the letters coming through for the column, but when Sweet Pea recognizes the handwriting on some of the mail, she decides to take things into her own hands. Next, I'd like to recommend Witchwood by Tahara Mafi. This story is about Laylee, whose father has lost himself to grief after his wife passed away and has since abandoned Laylee on a fruitless journey to try and bring her mother's soul back. This leaves Laylee as the only remaining Mordeshor, which means it's now her responsibility to wash the bodies of the dead and prepare them for the afterlife but she is largely ignored by her community and drastically overworked to the point where her skin and hair is turning silver until these two familiar faces come along determined to restore her to a place of dignity and respect. 
It's a fun, whimsical fantasy story where Laylee's culture is not exactly at the forefront, but there's still valuable representation because she wears the headscarf and the washing process correlates to a very real religious death practice. I also want to recommend The Best at It by Malik Pankoli. This is a recent release. It's an own voices queer middle grade story about Rahul Kapoor, a young gay Indian American boy growing up in the Midwest. Rahul is starting seventh grade and feeling pretty anxious, which only gets worse when his grandfather advises him to find the one thing he's really good at and become the absolute best at whatever it is. The problem is Rahul doesn't know what he's good at, and he starts to believe that finding this calling of his will make all his problems disappear. But what if he can't find it? I had this book on my radar like a year before its release, and I cannot wait to finally read it. Next up, I definitely recommend Some Places More Than Others by Renee Watson. This is an own voices middle grade story that's a little bit on the younger side, but I don't think that has any bearing on its power and its impact. It's about a young girl named Amara who wants to finally go meet her father's side of the family in Harlem and see where her dad grew up. But when she finally gets there, she realizes it's very different. For starters, her dad and her grandfather don't really speak to each other, and the streets are really busy and confusing, and it's easy to get lost, but the more time she spends there, the more she's learning where she fits into this family and this space. It's a really great story about healing, about history, and about the importance of learning what makes up the pieces of your heart and your existence. And lastly, I want to leave you with the Love Sugar Magic series by Ana Mariano. This is an own voices Latinx middle grade story about Leo Logroño, whose family owns a bakery in Texas, and they spend days making food for the Dia de los Muertos festival, which is by far their biggest event. Leo is hoping that she'll finally be able to help this year, but when her parents tell her that she's still too young, she ignores them, skips school, sneaks into the bakery, and finds out a huge family secret. The women in her family are brujas, and they bake magic into everything they make. Naturally, Naturally, Leo wants to prematurely unlock her magic, so she steals this ancient cookbook and secretly tries out a few recipes or spells to incredibly disastrous results. I have been meaning to read the second book in this series for so long because it is a pure delight. So there you have it. Those are some awesome, diverse middle grade books. There are definitely more that come to mind, but I can always make another video in this series. In the meantime, meet me in the comments below and tell me about a middle grade book that you would recommend yourself. But that's everything I had to recommend today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you on the flip side of the page.